My name is Brett Phillips. Today, we're going to talk about campaign reporting. And you can find it a couple of places in the UI. So let's get started. Where we'll first start is here on the dashboard. The dashboard, you actually have some app analytics that is tied to your either web SDK or, or your mobile app SDK, whether that's iOS or Android. We're not going to focus on this now, but this is the home dashboard of your Braze UI. Where we're going to first go before we even get into the analytics portion of this is to the messaging and campaigns. The reason for this is if we click on the messaging tab, within the messaging tab, we have an option to go to campaigns. Within the campaigns, this is where I want to show you guys tags. If you don't already have your campaigns tagged, please tag them. As you can see here, I have a couple of tags associated with this particular campaign. And if we go and click on the campaigns that we want to tag, we can set our own tags right away within this part of the UI. You just type in whatever you want, create new tag, and then you click create new tag again. That tag would then be associated with those campaigns. And then you can use that tag for filtering whenever you're trying to look at different dashboard views or build reports for your campaigns. Now let's head into the analytics section. Within the analytics section, there are a couple of things we're gonna look at today. We're gonna to look at report builder. We'll take a look at engagement reports and we'll take a look at email performance analytics dashboards. And then SMS, we won't take the time to look at that today, but it's the exact same thing as email performance, but specifically for SMS campaigns. So we'll hop into these and we'll show you guys what we can do. So within the report builder, what we have the option to do is build a report. Obviously, when you're building a report, you're going to be wanting to look at some more granular analytics. You want to be able to do analysis on that data, on those metrics, try to find trends or find things that could be relevant to the campaigns and the campaign success. And a lot of times the data behind the, or data within these reports can then drive data for your dashboards. So we'll start with creating a new report. We have two options here. You have the manual campaign or you have the automated campaign selection. These are pretty close in feature. The only large difference is if we go ahead and head into the automated campaign section and I say, let's get analytics for the last year or the last six months in this case, seven months. It's going to bring up all these campaigns, right? And now since this is the automated campaign report builder, all of these campaigns are going to automatically be included in my report, whether or not I want them to be. Now, this is helpful if you may know exactly what you want, or maybe you want to go ahead and use your tags and whittle it down and group them by your tags and just get those particular campaigns and you want to report on those. But it's not particularly helpful if you're just trying to get a broader view of how many campaigns you have out there and you want to go and select which ones you want to actually report on. So if we want to be able to have the same ability to filter, but then select, then we'll move to the report builder again. We'll create a new report and we'll go to the manual reporting. Within the manual reporting, I can do the same thing where I open up my search results to the last six months. Once that last six months is pulled up, you see the exact same list that we saw in the automated reports. But within this part of the UI, inside of this manual version, we then have the option to select exactly what we want to be able to look at here. And I'm interested in looking at anything that actually has sends attached to them. So I see everything we've done in the last six months, and then I'm going to select anything that has a send associated with it. We'll imagine that all these campaigns were geared towards getting people to log into the app, and we're going to build a report and drive it against that. I'll take a step back there and speak to that. When you're building these reports, you want to make sure that the reports that you're building are relevant to your goals or relevant to some curiosity or something that you that will bring you value or eventually bring the business value. In this case, we're trying to drive app visits. So the point of this report is going to be for me to see which one of these campaigns is driving the most app visits. Then I can try to dig deeper into that channel, or maybe it's the message within that channel that's driving it. And I can start applying those strategies to other parts or other channels within the business. So we're going to go with all the ones that we selected here. And I think I got all of them that have a send associated. So let's compare campaigns. Now, once this loads up, you're going to see very like a spreadsheet like data here where you have all the data that's relevant to your campaigns, all the data that's collected. We have conversions events that are collected. We have sends, we have opens, different types of clicks and click rates and unsubscribe bounces. So we have all that data available to us that we can look at. We can do analysis on and try to find those trends. One of the cool thing about this part of the UI here is there is a new feature called charts. You can either click this button, it'll shoot you down to the bottom, 
we can scroll down to the bottom and there's a chart here. Right now that chart is empty, but if you go and say, hey, I wanna look at all messages sent, and we're looking at our, we have our different channels, our different types of campaigns that went out. We had API trigger, trigger we had a web push, we had some email triggers, we had some content cards going out. So you can see those are all the messages sent and these are all the types of messages that were sent. Now we can add a metric here. And like I told you guys before, I particularly want to look at, you don't know this yet, but I particularly want to look at primary conversion event A. So primary conversion event A is started session within three days. So that means we sent the message and then within three days, they hopped into any of our apps that we have associated with our app group. Looking at this data at a quick glance, I can see that my content card campaigns are the most effective. Now I can go start looking into what's the copy in there? What am I doing in there? What messages? What are the CTAs in, inside of that? Or even should I push more messaging through that channel because my particular user base is responding to it well. And this is a nice quick view where I could start making some of those assumptions and then start digging deeper into those assumptions and hopefully finding something useful to the business. As you build these charts or build these views and reports, you can export these reports and it'll export this data out to you, or you can save it. And if you hit save on it, it'll have the name of the campaign here. I did a really bad job. So let's, let's hop back in there because I forgot to name the campaign. One of the other important things is naming your campaign. And when thinking about naming your campaign, you want to make sure that it's relevant to, to what you're reporting on here, right? We specifically talked about, we're looking at different messages, all part of the same campaign. And in this particular case, we're looking at app views, right? Or, or app visits. So I would want to call this report something like phrase the bar. And this is going to be our campaign message conversion. All right, that's relevant to me because I know that we're looking at the messages and we're looking at those conversions on those messages, right? And I could get even more specific. I could probably even dial down the naming and said app visits, right? And that's going to be an even better naming convention. So even if you don't, even if you start naming it, and you're like, oh, I could do better. You could hit the edit button. And now I can go back and say message app conversion, app visits. Spelling is key. Conversions, right? It's a little mouthy, but it explains exactly what I'm looking for, right? And like I showed you, if we mess up, we can always go back, hit the edit button, fix the naming convention. We'll go ahead and save. Um, now that's been saved again here, we can edit this report if we want to. If we wanted to go back and change elements, add different campaigns into it, add different channels into it, or take some out, right? We have the ability to do that by clicking that edit button. Right now we won't do that. We'll, we'll go ahead and cancel back out, and then we'll go back to the reports. And now that we've saved our report, we can see we have our campaign message app visit conversions, very clear on what we're trying to do here. And if we click into that, we'll see the same view that we just saw. We can go back and see our chart, view our chart. So the next thing I wanna look at here within analytics are our engagement reports. We just looked at the report builder and we built some, a report for a campaign. Within that report, we went ahead and saved it. We also had the option to export that data to ourselves. Another way you can export data to yourself and get a more custom view, if you notice, within that view, all the attributes were set. We didn't have the ability to choose the, asset, the attributes we wanted to look at for our report or report on. It just gave us all the attributes associated with the campaigns. So if we go to engagement reports, this doesn't give us a visual of the report, but we can create ourselves a report and that report will be emailed to us. So within this creation tool right here, once again, you have the manual or the automatic creation option. Down here, we have a couple of our cam campaigns. You can do a combination of campaigns and canvases or just campaigns or just canvases. Within that, we'll go ahead and we'll add both of our campaigns here that we have tagged with our B2B demo and we'll hit add stats. So adding stats is where you can now go and customize those attributes that you want to look at. Like before we were seeing the conversion events, we were seeing the bounces, we were seeing the clicks, we were seeing everything. But if all we wanted to do was look at sends, and then this is a, in this case, it's a different report we're looking at. We just want to understand the sends and the bounces associated with those sends and what percentage of sends are those bounces, right? We can then customize our report. We can set it up. We can give the name to this report once again. Make sure the name's relevant so it's easy for you to search for. When it hits your inbox, it's easy for you to know like, oh, this is the report that I was trying to develop and this is what this report is about. 
So this is going to be B2B campaign email bounce bounces. And just really straightforward, clean naming convention. We know exactly what it is. We can then do a couple of things. Do you want it uncompressed? Do you want gzip? Do you want regular zip? I'll, I would recommend zipping it so you don't have a thick file if you have a lot of data coming through. You can do your delimiters, whether you know you have your reporting BI tool or maybe even just like your spreadsheet set up to do type delimits versus comma delimits. You have the option to select from that here. Do you know you have to have one of these delimiters. You have to use one of the four delimiters available here. As you see, there's no option for a custom delimiter. And then who to send this to? In this case, I'm going to send this to myself. If I wanted to send it to another member of the team, I could share that report with another member of the team. You can just keep on adding people on by clicking in their, typing in their name and adding them to that send section. I'm just going to send it to myself for now. And then down here is where we can essentially let the, let it know how long do you want data for, right? These campaigns have been running for six months. Do I want the whole six months? Or in this case, do I want the last week or so, right? This case is looking at about right about the last all time for these particular campaigns for when they started. I can look at last seven days if I wanted to just look at last seven days, or I can look at today only, right? But in this case, these particular campaigns have only been running since the 25th. So this is giving me the entire window for those campaigns. Or you can include data for the last however many days or weeks if you wanted to. In this case, I'm going to go with the date range. Other option here is how do you want the data to be displayed? Do you want it to show data by days? Do you want to show data by weeks or do you want to show the data aggregated by like the campaigns or canvases? And I'm going to do in this case, showing it aggregated by the campaigns. And then you have some options to automatically exclude archived canvases or campaigns. So if you accidentally clicked or you leveraged a tag, maybe and within that tag, there are some archived campaigns that may not be active. So may not be super relevant to the reporting you want to do. Anything that has that archive, that that system archive tag on it, the system can automatically wipe that from the results for, from you. So you can still just select your tag easily, wipe out anything that, that doesn't belong in there because it's archived. And then down here at the bottom, we have the option to send this to ourselves immediately or send at a designated time. And when you do the designated time setting, you actually have the option to have this sent to you on a recurring basis. So I can have it sent once a month or once a week and so on and so forth. And you can have that never ending, or you can have it end at a particular time or after a particular number of sends, okay. as you see the options below. If we're going to go, it never ends once a week on Wednesdays, fine. We'll confirm that. Now, once again, I'm trying to show you guys the different naming convention errors that can happen or how you can go back and edit them if you need to. Now, in this particular part of the UI, it does not like if you're using spaces, commas, underscores. So you want to keep your naming pretty clean. And so basically, we just have to take out the spaces. I would recommend in these cases using camel case, because if you're using camel case, you can clearly see where a word starts and where a word ends. And that could just make it a cleaner from a visual standpoint. But once again, you're going to have to type your naming convention in here with no spaces, no extra characters. All right, we'll confirm. And right here, we're just going through and doing a review of the data. If everything looks good, it's coming to me. We have when the data will be displayed. We have our campaign, so we could double check that. And then down here, we have the specific options we picked for our attributes to be showcased. We launched that report, and when you hit launch report, that report gets sent to you, right? And then it's going to be recurring, so that thing's going to come to me weekly. So that's our engagement reports. The last thing I wanted to cover with you all is email performance and SMS performance as well. Once again, these are the exact same. It's just this system automatically is going to aggregate your email performance data here. It'll aggregate the SMS performance data in the other option. But here, this gives us a quick dashboard view of our email channel engagement and how our emails have been performing. As you can see here, 11 cents, we have 100% delivery rate. So it, it gets us all those important metrics right in our face so we can see you know, how well our campaign, or our email channel is doing. We can quickly see if there's something off or, or weird. Notice down here, you see compared to the last period. Right now, this is automatically showcasing about a 12 months of data. We're going to whittle that down and then so we can actually see some data, right? There's look what this does is it looks at your period and then it goes one period back. So this is looking from 2022 to 2023. That particular piece of the metric right here is looking at 2021 to 2022, right? But there's no data for it to compare. So there's nothing there. So if we come down here and we do the last week, okay, here we go. Let's do, there we go. If we do the last month of data. We have some of these where we have at least sent some other stuff last month within this sandbox, of course, that we're looking at here. 
And now since we've gotten a view where we can see comparable data, we can now see these metrics coming up that we're at 33% lift in the amount of emails that are sent month over month. So you can kind of see that month over month, year over year, week over week view by changing your filter to how long of a period you're looking at. And then it'll automatically give those comparable statistics down there at the bottom. Now, this part of the UI, there's not a ton you can do in here. But we can, once again, filter, do some filters here with our date, which help us do some comparisons. It gives us a very good overview quickly of how our email channel is performing. We can show the data in a couple of different ways. Like we have show changes in totals. So we're seeing compared to the last period, total three. And then if we go here, we can do show change in percentages and then no change compared to last 100% delivery rate. And that means last time around, we had 100% delivery rate as well, right? So there's no change. It was 100% last time, it was 100% this time. But from a total perspective, there were three total, I'm oh, sorry, there's four total emails delivered where there were only three delivered last time. So there's a 33% increase because we sent and delivered successfully one additional email. So hopefully that all congeals for you. So another option here, other than showing those in like the delivery rate versus the amount of emails delivered versus the totals we can filter down by our tags. Once again, why tags are important. So if we only wanted to see the performance of our B2B demo emails, we can apply here and we're going to have to widen the range a bit here, Let's go here. And once we widen that range a bit, we can then see there's four total sends for our particular campaign. There's no comparable period for this. But once again, we can see that those particular campaigns that are tagged with our B2B demo, we can see their performance as well. They're performing awesome. And then down here at the bottom, you, you get your little performance over time chart. You can look at it with a couple of different metrics included. Like if you wanted to look at the total sends versus the total opens, you know, the opens are now in yellow and then the sends are in blue. You notice the opens are way up because that is not a unique open. Those are total opens. But if we went and switched to unique opens, then, you know, there was one send, one open at that point, right? Two sends, two opens here. And then right here, we have one send, one open. So you can just click these different metrics and compare them to each other, see them on the chart together and see that data over time. You know, obviously, if you're sending high volumes, these charts are going to be up and down and giving you a lot of like quick trending information. That's really it. There's not a lot that you can do in this, but once again, it's a dashboard view that gives us very quick information to make decisions off of and also gives us the very quick ability to see trends. And that'll do it. That's it. So we looked at some campaigns and the reporting that we can do against those campaigns and even dashboards we can view against those campaigns. And hopefully you gained a little bit out of this. And my name is Brett Billups. I'm a solutions lead here at Stitch. And if you ever need a spot, we're here to help you raise the bar.